my sunglasses, you can tell. I'm crying. Yeah. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> oh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you're real. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Hot Steaks and Hotter Takes with Robert Gresham. Today's guest is Eric T. Edquist. He's a great comic here in Portland, runs the uh, delightful Loads of Laughs over at the Waypost. Uh, hey, let's uh, give this guy some hot steak. Hey, thanks for uh, coming today, Eric. Of course, of course. You ready to eat some uh, hot steaks? I am. Born ready. All right, well, I got some preheated questions for you. Lay them on me. Well, let's start out with, uh, are you from Portland uh, or did you move here? No, no, I, I li lived here about five years of Bellingham, Washington, which oh. is about 90 miles north of Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think our cameraman's from the uh, Seattle area. Alright, go Sounders. Like, go Red Bulls. <laughs> uh, what inspired you to start a stand-up comedy? I have just always been a fan of, uh, you know, Bill Burr, old Rusty Nuts. <laughs> cracking me up and I if, when I was younger people were like oh you're funny and I'm sure a lot of people get that and I just you know said what the heck and tried to help my loved it so yeah. kind of caught that addiction right then yeah yeah chasing that comedy dragon if you will when did you start when was that first open mic the first one I ever did was oh, about three and a half years ago at Alberta Street oh. and I got discouraged because I got I went over the light and the host, who I'm not going to name, was really rude about it. And so, after that, um, I didn't do it for a long time. But now I've been doing it regularly for about 14, 15 months now. So, why not? So, uh, now that you moved to Portland, mm -hmm. what do you hate the most about it? Um, the yupsters. The yupsters. It seems to be a common complaint from the community. I don't mind hipsters and I don't mind yuppies, but the hybrid. Oh. <laughs> oh. They, get all, they get better gas mileage, though. Don't they? they do. They all drive Priuses. <laughs> so, what would be the difference between the hipster and the, the yupster? Money. Money. Ah, so the hipster's just the. There's no irony there. They're not wearing those cheap clothes because that's what they can buy at the thrift store. Right. Or they do and they just pretend like they don't have any money, but then they want to go out for $6 pints and get rid of it. Yeah, if you don't know the PBR life. No. <laughs> Tecate. Tecate. Uh, well, uh, those are a lot of our preheated questions out of the way, so uh, let's get ready for some hot steak. Let's I'm, do it. I'm ready for it, man. Great. Love this presentation. I know, I wanted to make it look good for you. Looks great. I'm going to start to dive right in. You want medium rare, right? Medium rare. All right, so perfect. Well, we're going right to left here. I think that's for, for the people at home. Yes. That's my angle. might be his left or right. All right. So we'll begin right there with your uh, your medium question. Mm -hmm. And after you get a good bite of that, we'll start it out. Mm -hmm. So, uh... How would you best describe your comedy style using three movie titles? Ooh. Uh, let's see, I would do uh, Die Hard, because I think about dying a lot. Uh, I would do, hmm, She's All That, because sometimes I like to think I'm all that, <laughs> even though I'm not. And then, uh, let's see, 10 things I hate about you because I hate myself. <laughs> mm. So mainly it's the titles that inspire you, so most of the content of the film. Yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of both, but have you ever seen 10 Things I Hate About You? Oh yeah, Heath Ledger, uh, the great uh, comedian, I want to say Larry Miller is in that movie as mm -hmm. a great, father character. Great film. He's a great comedian. Mm -hmm. 
I just busted through that first piece. How do you like it? Delicious. Good flavor. Excellent. Good balance. And it's cooked medium, right? You did a good job. Sometimes I, I'll get that crust on it and someone will think it's a little overdone. Or, like, I'm surprised it's inside. Mm -mm. So, uh, we talked a little bit about this in your intro, but uh, who are two of your comedy influences? We'll say other than uh, the great Bill Burr. Um, I would say another Bill, Bill Hicks. Oh, I just love his delivery and just how he kind of laughs at all the dark stuff, like his goat boy joke. Okay. Uh, and then I'd probably have to say, uh, at least starting out, it was George Carlin because I consider him the greatest of all time. Like, the dude would do specials, new material, like, he did it for years and years, just he'd have a new hour. That's something that all three of them sort of share. They're very, they were all prolific in, in the amount of time that they performed. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty good there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill Hicks, yeah, he had some good specials. I know towards the end it was a little bit hairy, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's Alright, so uh, we're about through that first, uh, the medium bites. Mm -hmm. And uh, go to this third question. A lot of uh, comedians, they tell a joke, maybe at the beginning of their career on stage, that they no longer tell at all. Mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell us that joke for you, the one that you're like, no, immediately, like, oh, I don't tell this for mm -hmm. any reason. Basically, oh, no, it's not necessarily jokes, it's just bits about, like, getting together with heavy set women because <laughs> people are tired of hearing about that and the body positivity. And, you know, I'm all for body positivity, but people are tired of me talking about that, so I just <laughs> steer clear of it. Well, I mean, everyone needs loving out there, so. It's true. I'm a very love positive guy. Yeah, I mean, I like larger ladies because I'm a big fatty. Me too. Yeah, me like too. Oh, so it's getting, you're starting to feel the heat there, huh? A little bit. All right, so uh, now that we've got that joke out of the way, or, or at least the topic of the joke, do you want to tell an act, the actual joke itself? Or? Uh, yeah, I can tell a joke. One, three, two, one, go. All right, so uh, feel like telling us that, uh, that joke, that body positive joke? Um, well, okay. It, it's, those are more bits. I guess if I were to tell you a joke, it's just a... It could be a bit. Anything that you feel like doing. Like, it's something you don't perform anymore. I mean, I... Not everyone just writes jokes. Uh, what did the, uh, farmer say when he saw his pig had a puppy eye? What did he say? Ugh, what a pig sty. <laughs> a little punny. <laughs> I like it. Alright, so let's dig into the second bite. This one's gonna be, uh... This one's made with some, uh... A little bit of hint of ghost pepper and some habanero. Ooh. So this one's gonna be a little hotter. Mmm. Alright, so as we're busting in there, let that flavor kick in. Mm -hmm. Uh where are the Washington Redskins you think the best football team ever? <laughs> best team. Well, um, I guess it would depend on what grounds. I guess they're the team that I guess I'm for them changing the name, but their owner Dan Snyder's like, oh, there's no way in hell you're going to make me change this team name. So would your answer be that it's because Daniel Snyder is the greatest football owner of all time? No, the greatest football owner of all time is Robert Kraft of the New England Patriots. Oh! I mean, the numbers don't lie, the Super Bowls don't lie. I know a lot of people are anti-Patriots and Tom Brady and the complete opposite. Well, I'll give you that. You can definitely not argue with those numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I'm going to show you a picture here. Mm -hmm. This is from way back in the past. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here in this picture? Yeah, so I was 1920, and uh, some friends of mine, the ones in the picture, we decided to go over to Spokane. Oh, uh, shout to Spokane for a Halloween party. Yeah, go Gonzaga Bulldogs. Uh, because one of my friends in that picture is a twin, and his twin went to Gonzaga. Oh. And we just decided to run amok uh, in Spokane. That was a very crazy, drunken weekend. That looks like it was a fun night. And uh, who, who were you supposed to be in this costume? I was Reverend Run from Run DMC with a shitty white boy goatee. <laughs> Well, at least you're keeping your lyrics uh, flowing right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're kicking up towards the uh, the hotter, mm -hmm. the final hot questions. 
Final hot. Yeah. yeah, so we're just busting through these. I'm really appreciative of you doing the show coming in. It's hard. You having fun? Is it? I'm it's having a great time. Excellent. All right, so we're going to round this out with our one of our last questions and then a couple of games. All right. And uh, we'll let you get into uh, one of those bites there of our the hottest brand of our steak. I'll come back to this. Brand. This one has got no habanero in it, all ghost pepper. We're looking at about five dried ghost peppers in this one. Oh boy, down the hatch. Now this one's going to be a fun one. All right. So let's begin with that one. From the following list. Aziz Ansari, mm -hmm. Louis C.K., mm -hmm. and Bill Cosby. Yes. Who has the best special? I would say Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. Which one? His most recent one. Ah, so 2007? Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that one. Even though that was kind of right around the time, like, not much farther after is when all the unfortunate... Uh, Articles of him coming out being you know, doing what he did, which I don't agree with, but you know, at least he's out of the spotlight now. And uh, I, don't know what, I don't know what the future entails for that guy. Yeah, what do you think the end game is for those kind of characters? Should just be like, should we just kill them off? Mm. I mean, because we don't obviously don't want them to ever work again. Or no, have any jobs, right? We'll just see how. We'll just see what happens in the timeline of what goes on. Who knows, maybe people will forgive him and he'll be back, but for the meantime, just lay low and don't whip your dick out and start masturbating. People don't like that. Well, we hope he is, uh, in case he gets to the next hot ones. Yeah. Woo. All right, so, finish up with uh, the last couple bites here. We'll play our, our hot bite challenge. Ooh, I like a good challenge. So I've got three different areas here for the game. Uh, you can choose bad pun challenge, mm -hmm. a pickup line challenge, or the uh, would you rather challenge. I can only choose one. Uh, you can choose two of them. Uh, the would you rather challenge, I don't have these cards out here for you. <laughs> well, I would one. do the would you rather challenge and the pickup line challenge. All right, so we'll get that one aside. All right, so we'll start with the uh, would you rather challenge, and we're going to try to get these uh, down and as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that you'd be struggling through the bites during this time, but uh, it looks oh, like you're yeah. kicking its butt pretty good. I'm uh, hungry. <laughs> All right, so for the pickup line challenge, I would like you to say the following seven pickup lines within 30 seconds. Looks like you're uh, not struggling too much. It should be easy. All right. Hey, cutie. Want to go on halves with the big bear? You have a beautiful voice. I bet it would sound wonderful muffled in my penis. Will you help me find my lost puppy? I think he went to that cheap hotel across the street. You remind me of my little toe, because I want to bang you against every piece of furniture in my house. Ooh, nice, dude. You're the reason God created bonus. Ooh, call me Chris Brown, cause I'd hit that. Ooh, I'd hit it twice. <laughs> Wanna spend the night at my place? The couch doesn't pull out, but I do. <laughs> Those are good. <laughs> All right, so how's that heat? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, it looked, I probably looked like I just watched Titanic. <laughs> but it was pretty, pretty spicy in there? Ooh, very spicy. Definitely finished it off. That makes me happy. At least it was tasty enough that you finished it. Oh, uh, more delicious. So. All right, so I've got three would you rather questions for you. All right. Let's see if you can get through all of them. Let's do it. So would you rather mm -hmm. strangle a pit bull mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a human baby? Pit bull. Definitely pit bull? Definitely pit bull. Pit bull's a dog, human's a human. I have to agree with that one. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> Well, we don't really have to continue with the challenge because I, I just want to get everyone to say they want to strangle a pit bull. <laughs> but we'll continue with the, with the challenge. Oh, I do. I, I will say that real quick. I do love that post that you posted about the uh, sir, or the emotional support dog uh, oh, biting okay. someone on a plane just because you go against the grain on that. But since of your experience 
I think it's funny that you post those things and people get so checked about bad. it. Yeah, it's like, hey, that's sort of my thing, you know. It's, some people like posting about the Patriots. I like posting about pit bulls. Tom Brady, I love you. Tom Brady is the a pit bull of football. <laughs> All right, second would you rather question. Mm -hmm. So would you rather mm -hmm. strangle a pit bull puppy or cure one child every day of cancer by molesting them? Oh boy, pit bull. Sayonara, sucker. You're the uh, you're the bad egg this this game. Definitely go down, Pitbull. Oh no, molesting is no good. <laughs> all right, finally and probably the toughest out of all the would you rather's. So would you rather uh -huh. strangle a Pitbull puppy uh -huh. or be forced to watch your parents have sex every single day, knowing that if you joined in just once, it would stop. Pitbull. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, these pit bulls, man, they're getting a rough shake. <laughs> yeah, they like to roughly shake people, so it's turned about fair play on those pit bulls. Let's see what you did there. <laughs> Alright, so uh, hey, where can uh, the fans out there follow you on uh, social medias? Well, if you're so inclined to follow me, uh, my name's Eric T. Edquist. I'm on Facebook, and uh, I've been getting really down on the Instagram lately. Uh, posting on there regularly and my Instagram name is Eric Thomas Ed so uh, yeah if you liked anything I did or if you just want to talk shit to me I like that too so uh, that's where you can find me all right make sure to talk some shit to Eric <laughs> <laughs>